In this video of Game of Theories, I'll introduce team composition theory. Its history can be traced back to the 1950s and 1960s. Teams are building blocks of organizations. Just because we have talented team members doesn't necessarily mean that the team is high performing. An example is the 2004 U.S. men's Olympic basketball team. Which included highly skilled Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Tim Duncan, and Allen Iverson. With those team members, the team was favored to win Olympic gold medal. However, the team won bronze medal while losing three games against its opponents, the most games ever lost by a U.S. men's Olympic basketball team. Team composition theory explains how to build an effective team. Here, teams are defined as first, two or more individuals who, second, socially interact face to face or increasingly virtually, third, possess one or more common goals, fourth, are brought together to perform organizationally relevant tasks, fifth, exhibit interdependence with respect to workflow goals and outcomes, sixth, have different roles and responsibilities. And sevens are together embedded in an encompassing organizational system with boundaries and linkages to the broader system context and the tax environment. The key elements of this definition are that in order to have a team, team members must have some shared goal and some degree of interdependence. If I myself have required expertise and resources to achieve a goal. There is not much need to have a team. Moreover, team members must occupy positions, take on roles, and operate in a context that has implications for their functioning. In a team, there is a mix of characteristics and traits among team members. Team composition refers to the overall configuration of team members. Team composition theory therefore explains how to put together. The right individuals with the relevant skill sets and expertise to not only help a team accomplish its goals, but to also maximize the team's overall effectiveness. Several recent meta-analyses and reviews have investigated how team outcomes are influenced by different aspects of team composition, such as teams' personality mix. Demographic diversity, average cognitive ability, and attributes of cores versus peripheral members. When composing teams, leaders need to consider how each individual team member can contribute to the team's collective success. In teams, we sometimes have rock stars who have remarkable capabilities in completing crucial tasks. But if those rock stars are in a team, To pursue individual glory, not the team's collective success, then they have difficulty working with other team members, and the team's collective performance will suffer. One of the most important tasks for leaders is to build a team. In this team building process, leaders are faced with three decisions: first, what kind of team to create; second, how to structure a team; and third. How and when to actively coach the team as it proceeds with its work. Scholars have categorized the leader's decisions in team compositions into six types. At the simplest, changes in team composition can involve the addition, subtraction, or replacement of a single member. Slightly more complex is a situation when multiple team members are replaced simultaneously. Third, a cohort of new personnel might be distributed simultaneously to multiple teams. For example, police officer academy graduates are assigned to different teams in the police department. Fourth. A new cross-functional team, such as a task force, may be created to address a particular problem. Fifth, simultaneously staffing multiple new cross-functional teams. Sixth, assigning existing team members into new teams as an organization responds to restructure, merger, or downsizing. 
Regardless, leaders' high-quality decisions in those areas determine whether the team will succeed or become dysfunctional. If so, what do leaders need to consider when it comes to team composition? At least five aspects of team composition have been identified. First, leaders need to decide on team size. What is the optimal team size? While empirical evidence have not provided a clear answer, some research suggested that team size had a covalent relationship with team effectiveness. On the one hand, too few team members undermine team performance. This is because larger teams may have access to more resources, such as time, energy, money, and expertise that are needed to accomplish complex tasks. On the other hand, too many team members are counterproductive to team performance. This is because it takes a lot of time and effort to coordinate a large team. An anecdote is that Jeff Bezos famously holds a meeting rule of two pizzas. If there are more people in the meeting than two pizzas could feed, there are too many people in attendance. Too many cooks spoil the broth. In addition to coordination challenges of a big team, the diffusion of responsibility can demotivate team members. When you are the only one to shoulder responsibility, you have no excuse but to contribute everything you have. But when you share responsibility with others, you are likely to assume that others could and will contribute to the team. Being part of a team means that you feel less pressured to take action. The mere presence of others diffuses the sense of personal responsibility of any individual to get involved, and reinforces mutual denial of the gravity of a situation. Here is a quote that describes the diffusion of responsibility. This is a story about four people named everybody, somebody. Anybody and nobody. There was an important job to do, and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody would do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. Other research suggests that team size was unrelated to team performance. Still, some scholars argue that increasing team size actually improves performance without limit. Which of the three arguments is correct or accurate? It's up to you to evaluate and replicate previous empirical studies. You also need to design more studies and see where evidence will lead you. For now, we can only say that team size is dependent on many variables and factors, including but not limited to the nature of the team tasks, individual expectations for team members, and the roles that each team member needs to play. The second attribute in team composition is team fault line. In geology, fault line is a line on the rock surface or the ground that traces a geological fault. In social sciences, it refers to a difference that is likely to have serious consequences. Team fault lines are hypothetical dividing lines based on team members' attributes that split a team into relatively homogeneous subgroups. For example, a mixed team of men and women would have an imaginary split between the two genders. When a team is in its initial stage of forming, members may use demographic traits such as race, gender, and age. To place themselves into subteams, the strength of a fault line indicates the level of similarity within subteams and the extent of dissimilarity between them. Strong fault lines are usually associated with a negative impact on important level outcomes, such as team performance, conflict, and team cohesion. Even if those individual differences are not perceived by team members. Fault lines, regardless of their origin, 
are likely to undermine team functioning because individuals begin to create more interpersonal connections within the sub teams than with the teams as a whole. In extreme cases, the members of a sub team may feel like the split is irreconcilable and break away completely from the team or organization. The construct of fault lines helps explain inconsistent findings on the relationship between team diversity and team performance. In an article titled "Team Fault Line Measures: A Computational Comparison and a New Approach to Multiple Subgroups," published in Organizational Research Methods in 2013. Authors introduced how to use R to calculate diversity fault lines. The third attribute in team composition is knowledge, skills, and abilities. High-performing teams often consist of a group of individuals with different knowledge, skills, and abilities. The team composition determines the array of knowledge, skills, and abilities within a team. Knowledge includes the facts and the principles that apply to the domain of the team. Skills can be either basic or cross-functional. Basic skills include developed capacities that assist in the learning or faster acquisition of knowledge. Cross-functional skills assist in the ability to carry out tasks that occur across jobs. Skills can also be categorized into technical skills, that is, adequate ability to do a variety of jobs, human skills, that is, the ability to interact with others, and conceptual skills, that is, the ability to learn and use newly acquired knowledge. Abilities are long-lasting individual traits that impact team performance. Abilities can include multiple dimensions. Ranging from scope to origin to focus, diversity of abilities within a team allows team members to learn from one another and to generate new ideas by combining or merging their qualifications. The fourth attribute in team composition is personality. Personalities refers to a pattern of human behavior. Personality is expressed through regular patterns of behavior over time. Rock stars may work well on their own, but if they are arrogant or dominant, their personalities prevent them from being a good team player. Individual personality traits can influence the team's processes and outcomes. For example, extroverted team members can create better team communication. Conscientious and agreeable team members can increase overall team performance. Although team personality composition appears to be a relatively robust predictor of team effectiveness, different compositions may be more or less effective depending on the task and the amount of member interaction required for effective team performance. For example, team-level conscientiousness is more strongly related to effectiveness for performance and planning tasks than it is for creativity and decision-making tasks. Even though the mechanisms by which team personality composition influences team performance require further investigation, it is abundantly clear that personality composition has important implications for team effectiveness. The fifth attribute in team composition is team diversity. Team diversity doesn't simply refer to a team's demographics; it also refers to physical locations, status, seniority, nationality, cultural norms, personality, values, motivations, individual knowledge, and expertise. Team diversity refers to the distribution of personal attributes across members of an organizational work team. Surface level diversity reflects differences that are more readily observable. For example, race and gender. Deep level diversity reflects differences that are less visible. For example, personality and values. The distinction between these two types of surface and deep level attributes is important because demographic attributes may not be as relevant to a team's given task, but they shape members' perceptions and behaviors.
the influence of team diversity on team outcomes is not clear cut. It depends on the nature of the team's tasks and the particular outcomes of interest. Research seems to suggest that diversity may have a positive effect on performance, but a more negative effect on behavioral outcomes, such as team member turnover. One reason of the consistent findings is that most studies focus on only a single characteristic, not multiple ones simultaneously. The attributes of team composition I introduce here are not an exhaustive list. Different team tasks may require different and additional attributes. Regardless, to improve overall team effectiveness, leaders need to understand that high-performing teams are composed of individuals not just relevant expertise, but people with specific characteristics and traits that enable the team to flourish. However, there are many questions remained unanswered. For example, what constitutes ideal member combinations, and how a leader orchestrates team member combinations? The unanswered questions present opportunities for new researchers. Many scholars have attempted to aggregate individual members' attributes to a collective team attribute or outcome, but. Many challenges have plagued the field, including how to understand and index team composition and how to model its influence on team outcomes. Without consistent findings, it's been difficult to provide practical guidance for leaders to place the right mix of people on the team in order to set the stage for effective team outcomes. There are two types of aggregation process by which individual attributes, such as team members' knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics, can combine to form a collective level variable, such as team composition. The first type of aggregation is a compositional process. An example is to use the average team member competences as a collective level construct, such as team human capital. Another example is diversity index. If it is used to represent the collective level construct as a variance of members' individual characteristics, the issue with the compositional process is that individual level attributes are assumed to be comparable and weighted equally as they are aggregated into a collective level construct. The second level of aggregation is a compilation process. The collective level construct is something different from a mere descriptive statistic of individual level contributions. For example, team performance may be unduly influenced by the least or most competent individual member, members who occupy certain positions in the team, or individuals who emerge and take on particular roles in the team, such as leader or boundary spanner. If we illustrate the compositional model and the compilation model of aggregation, we then have four models of team composition. Individual-focused models include traditional personnel position fit model and personnel model with teamwork considerations. The traditional personnel position fit model assumes that. The team will be more effective to the extent that individuals are well suited for the positions that they occupy. In the traditional personnel position fit model, team members' contribution can be depicted by the formula here. This formula includes performance of member M in position P, member M's score on competency J. The weight of competency J in task K, member M's weighted competency on position task K, and relative importance of task K for performance in position P. And the team effectiveness can be represented as the sum of performance of M in position P. The implicit assumption of the traditional personnel position fit model is that the performance of members in different positions simply addictively contributes to overall team success in an unweighted fashion. 
This assumption, however, has rarely been directly investigated in research that examines the contribution of members' performance of task roles to team effectiveness. This is why, in practice, selecting highly skilled individuals doesn't necessarily yield high team performance. Another model that has an individual focus is that a personnel model with teamwork considerations, which considers the team members' contribution to the team as a collective, not just through their individual position, but the balance between individual and the collective activities. To overall team effectiveness, the personnel model with teamwork considerations assumes that team effectiveness is enhanced to the extent that members all possess generic team-related competences. Also, members who occupy certain positions in the team may be able to exert greater influence on overall team functioning than others. Surgeons in the surgical teams have disproportionately high influence on team processes and functioning than others do. A team-oriented surgeon can create an environment where members' contributions are welcomed and incorporated. Equally important, a dominating or less skilled surgeon can ruin teamwork and discourage the contributions of others. So the personnel model with teamwork considerations includes a weighted effects of individual team members' contributions to overall team effectiveness. This is reflected in the relative importance of position P filled by member M for task Q. Teamwork on team task Q can be depicted by the formula here. The formula includes teamwork on team task Q. Team competency of member M in position P for competency J, and the relative importance of position P filled by member M for task Q, and the team effectiveness can be represented by this formula. In this formula, X refers to relative contribution of aggregated member position performances to team effectiveness. One minus X refers to Relative contribution of teamwork to team effectiveness. The third model is the team profile model, which focuses on distribution of individual team members' knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics, such as mean values, team fault lines, and some diversity index. Empirical support for the predictive value of the team profile model is mixed. This is because researchers must carefully consider what attributes to be included, how they are indexed, and contextual factors. Take diversity as an example. Diversity can be characterized along a number of dimensions, including surface and deep level diversity, highly and less job-related diversity, and readily detectable versus underlying diversity. Findings of the relationship between diversity and team performance have been inconsistent. In the team profile model, a team profile includes a team requisite knowledge, skill, ability, and other characteristic that is not tied to any given position. For example, a team needs someone who speak a local language or coordinates with other teams. And perform boundary spanning activities. Another example is that the team might benefit from some members who questioned the status quo. But if everyone did so, it would be dysfunctional for the team. If all team members need a required knowledge, skill, ability, and other characteristic, then we use the personnel model with the teamwork consideration. If the knowledge, skill, ability, and other characteristic is required by one team member, we use the relative contribution model, which I'll introduce shortly. But if there is a value in having some balance of a given attribute in the team that is not tied to the position requirement, then we use the team profile model. As a result. The team profile model builds on the personnel model with teamwork consideration, 
by adding the relative importance of different team profiles. The team effectiveness can be depicted by the formula here. This formula includes the sum of members M's contributions to team profiles L and the relative importance of team profile L. The fourth model is relative contribution model, which takes a network approach and focuses on the strongest and weakest team members. Using the relative contribution model, we assume the interdependence of team members in completing their tasks. In networks, not all team members have an equal share of influence on the team performance. Negative team members can have particularly insidious influence on the team performance in different ways. First, pessimistic members can undermine team morale. Second, Members who shirk responsibility or take advantage of other team members by free riding make others feel frustrated and ultimately withhold their contributions to the team. Third, when paired with negative members, people begin to exhibit dysfunctional psychological responses. Therefore, one team member's individual level performance is dependent on other team members. This is the key component added to the relative contribution model. The linked performance of member M in position P can be depicted in the formula here. This formula includes linked performance of team M in position P, team member M's performance on task Q in position P, performance of team member M in position P on task Q, Index of performance of other members in member M's team, other positions in member M's team, and the interdependence of members. Team effectiveness can then be depicted in this formula. What is missing in this team effectiveness formula? To fully understand the relationship between team composition and the team performance, we need to investigate how team effectiveness changes over time. So researchers added time to the formula of team performance. In the formula here, T refers to any particular temporal period. In this video, I introduced team composition theory. I first introduced attributes of team composition, followed by different models that have been built to study team composition. The models can get very complicated as we attempt to catch different attributes at both individual and team levels. As I've mentioned throughout this video, many findings in team composition research have been mixed. Those inconsistent findings are challenges and opportunities for you to refine the models and build better models to explain how to build a team to maximize team performance. If you want to know more about how to build a theoretical framework for your research, I have published a book titled Demystify Theories, a workbook for developing theoretical frameworks of educational leadership research. The link of the book is in the description below.